So the GeForce Now native app has officially released for the Steam Deck, and we're gonna be checking that out today. Before we jump into that, I'm gonna give an overview on what GeForce Now is for those that may not be aware. I'll do a quick little overview of the different membership levels. We'll talk the installation process of the GeForce Now app, and then we'll show some gameplay and I'll talk about my experiences with the free and the performance tier. So first off, what is GeForce Now? So GeForce Now is a cloud streaming service where you can play your library of games via cloud streaming. I think the key point there is that you're able to play your library, your existing library. And I think that may be one of those things that people may not realize if they've never signed up for GeForce Now before. This isn't a membership like Game Pass where once you subscribe, you're getting access to a bunch of games. Rather, you're connecting your existing libraries, whether it's Steam, Ubisoft, Epic, or Microsoft, and you're able to play your library of games. So if you're not a Game Pass member, you're not going to magically be able to play Game Pass games via GeForce Now. If you don't own a game such as Claire Obscure Expedition 33, you're not going to magically be able to play it via GeForce Now. If you link your Battle.net account, but you're not subscribed to World of Warcraft, you're not going to magically be able to just start playing that. So once again, the key point is you're able to play games that you already have access to just in a cloud streaming sort of functionality. And then with GeForce Now, this is a subscription-based service, so you do have different options. Off the bat, there is a free tier, so you don't actually have to pay to utilize GeForce Now. And then there's the performance tier and the ultimate tier. So the higher you get, obviously the more expensive it's going to be, but each tier comes with a little bit more uh, perks. Some of the main advantages are on the free tier, you're only able to play one hour at a time and then your session will end. There's no limit to how many times you can start a new session, but you're limited to one hour sessions. With the free tier, you also have to sit through ads, which I'll show you in a little bit. If you upgrade to the performance tier, you will see some more advantages such as 1440p if you're hooked up to an external monitor, you get six hour session lengths. And in my experience, I actually saw some better performance this way. And then the ultimate tier, which is the most expensive, um, boast the capability for 4K. If you're hooked up to a 4K monitor or TV, you get eight hour session lengths and a few other advantages there. Now I'll say right now, I don't know if the ultimate tier is worth it if you're primarily using it for the Steam Deck. Even though it says you can get up to 240 FPS, for the Steam Deck, at least as of right now, it's still locked to 60 FPS. So even if you're on that Ultimate tier, you're still going to only get a maximum of 60 FPS um, on the Steam Deck. They have said that they're trying to see what they can do to get that up to the 90. Um, but if you're expecting more than 60 FPS with that Ultimate tier, you're not going to see it. And then once again, with that Ultimate tier, I think the only way it's really worth it with the Steam Deck is if you're actively hooking this up to a 4K monitor or TV. Uh, other than that, I don't really see a cost benefit of subscribing to the Ultimate tier if you're mainly using this for the Steam Deck. But let's go ahead and jump into the installation process for this app. So obviously, you're on your Steam Deck. Let's go ahead and hit that Steam button, go down to power, and let's switch to desktop. Once we're in desktop mode, go ahead and open up your browser of choice. Let's navigate to GeForce Now. You can search for it in your search bar. And from here, I'm just gonna click that first download link and that's gonna take me to the appropriate page. Once I'm on the GeForce Now download page, I am gonna go ahead and scroll down to the option that says Steam Deck. And I'm gonna click that download option. Click download. And once that's downloaded, I'm gonna go ahead and open up my file explorer and navigate to my downloads folder and click on that file that I just downloaded. I wanna go ahead and execute that. We can continue. 
And the installation process here, it's gonna take a couple of minutes, so just kind of let this do its own thing. Once it's finally installed, you're gonna see that it is restarting Steam. And then from there, it's basically gonna tell you that you're good to go and you can navigate back into gaming mode. Once we're back in gaming mode, let's hit that Steam button, navigate to library and go over to the non-Steam tab and you can see your GeForce Now download there. Let's go ahead and open that up, click play. Now the first time that you actually open this, you're gonna need to agree to the terms and all of that. And then it's going to ask you to link your existing account. If you don't have an account already, I would suggest setting that up either on your phone or computer first and then come back to this step. And once you do have an active account, it's gonna ask you to scan this code, scan the QR code or go to that appropriate link, enter the eight digit code that you have there so that it can appropriately link your account. Once that account is linked, you'll be navigated to the homepage of GeForce Now. From here, if you don't have any linked libraries, you can go up to the three lines at the top, click settings, and you can go to the connections page and it'll show you all of the different libraries that you can link to GeForce Now. If you haven't done this before, once again, it might be easier to do it on a computer, but you can go ahead and get logged into all of these so that you can sync and link all of your appropriate libraries to have access to your games. And then from here, now that you're on the homepage, your libraries are linked, you can start checking out whatever game you wanna play and get playing. I do wanna note that one of the things that I did notice is that even though I am a Game Pass subscriber, there are some games that are locked if you are not a paid member, such as the new Doom game, the Oblivion Remaster, um, I think the Microsoft Flight Simulator, and the Indiana Jones game, just to name a few. So you will not be able to play these as a free member even if you're a Game Pass subscriber. Now before I jump into some gameplay, I am showing that right here at this time of filming, I was a free subscriber. I'm checking out the network connection and I meet all the recommended numbers. So I should be good to go. If you are a free subscriber, whenever you jump into a game, you're going to have to wait. You're gonna to have to sit through the ads and wait for a computer to be available to you. But eventually you'll get into a game. In my experience, it didn't take more than two to three minutes at a time. Now I did decide after going through the free gameplay to sign up for a day pass of the performance tier just to see if I found any differences. Going through the network test, I'm still hitting those same numbers I had previously, hitting those recommended numbers, but honestly, in my experience, I feel like I got better performance as a paid member as opposed to free. Ready. Five. Five. Oh, 
So that's how to set up the native GeForce Now app on your Steam Deck. Ultimately, who is this for? I think it's for gamers who A, want to be able to play some games that maybe they're not able to play via SteamOS, such as Call of Duty, Fortnite, um, Destiny 2. If you link the appropriate libraries, you can play those through GeForce Now. I think it's also good for gamers who want to play games at a better performance than they would play natively. A lot of the new games, as we've seen in the past, just don't necessarily play as well. So assuming that you have a pretty stable internet connection, by utilizing a service such as this, you would expect to see better gameplay, better performance. Now I will say that I personally saw better performance as a paid member as opposed to a free member. Is that because I have access to the RTX 40 rigs or whatever? I'm not sure. As we saw, my network uh, numbers, my network stats were basically the same. That didn't change, 
but I felt like I got better performance, less latency, less input lag and all that when playing as a performance member, signing up for that day pass as opposed to playing as a free member. But ultimately, you need to decide if it's worth it to subscribe to one of those membership tiers. Uh, benefits can be increased performance, but also longer session lengths. But once again, you have to determine if it's worth it for you. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, drop a like, subscribe to the channel because your support does mean everything. Thanks everybody for watching. Have a great day and game on.